Hello guys and welcome back to another video guide and today as a lot of people have asked I thought we'd cover a basic resource efficient factory that covers the vast majority of resources you need in the first two tiers of satisfactory and with it we'll set up a storage facility and a drop box for your exploration items so if this does help you out please do drop a thumbs up and obviously if you want to see more make sure to subscribe because in a follow-up guide we will cover the setup we will need to cover rotors reinforced iron plates as well as smart plating and if you're lucky maybe a few other things as well now as this is a factory i will assume that you've been able to produce and stock at least some degree of concrete iron and copper items the factory that we are building will also require two Mark 1 miners on normal iron nodes, as well as a single miner on a copper node, as well as a miner on a normal limestone node. So we're just going with the bare, uh, the basics for this. All of them are going to be on the normal nodes for this. To start off, we will need to unlock base building, which is the first hub tier unlock in the hub. And from there, once you've got enough concrete, we're going to start the build. Now I am using pack utility to fly and I also have creative mode engaged just to make this video quicker for me to do. The first thing that you're going to want to do once you've got the resources is build a grid. This is going to be 16 wide followed by 10 deep. Once we've filled in our grid, the next thing that we're going to do is get to work on the iron uh, resources. The reason why I use the foundations is just to keep everything clean in our build. It'll also help us control our spaghetti later on. And from here, we're going to be placing two smelters in this column, one here, and then also a second one in the fourth column. And we're doing this in the middle. So at this point, the next thing that we need to do is go to the hub and unlock logistics mark one if i remember correctly this will unlock us the conveyor splitter the conveyor merger and the lifts as well which we may use later on should you be interested in unlocking the smart splitters from here we're going to place a splitter just in front of this smelter and we're going to connect this up and from this splitter we're going to run two lines each into their own smelter. These will both be set to iron ingots. This particular section is going to be dedicated to the iron rods between four constructors. These will be placed just in front, and so each one of these will have to split into two. I prefer to use place the constructors first, and we'll do this either side like so, and then next place the splitters, one directly in front of each of the smelters. All of these constructors will then be set to iron rods. At this point, we're going to be splitting these two lines of rods, one into a um, storage unit, so that we can store the iron rods and the others will be used for screws. So to do that, we're going to first merge these two together. We can place this just here. And then in front of this, we're going to place three more constructors. Now at this point, your factory should look like this. From this point, we are going to merge all of these lines together like so. And we're also going to place a storage container at the end. This will transport us a total of 30 iron rods along this line. Here, however, is slightly different. We're going to be producing 120 screws per minute. For me, I'm not too bothered about this. What we're going to do is simply merge them like we normally would. And then when we've unlocked the Mark II belts, which will come later on, we will load balance. Uh, we will upgrade this belt to a Mark II. 
Until then, this won't be running efficiently and we will have a bottleneck, a backlog of resources. However, the next thing that we need to do is the iron line specifically for iron plates. We're going to add a smelter in front in line with the previous ones. We're also going to place another one to the right in the middle of this column. Once these are connected, we will set these to iron and we will then place another constructor, this time immediately in front of the two smelters. And these are just going to feed straight into constructors. From here, we can add a merger in front and we're going to place another storage unit directly in front, right at the end. At this point, you will have your screws, your iron rods, and also your iron plates in production. And you can see that we're already starting to set up a basic storage system for our factory. At this point, we're going to bust some copper over to our factory as well. Once you've got the copper line back to your base, as you can see here, it's going to slowly bring the copper across. Uh, for me, I have to traverse these two lines. All we're going to do here is grab the conveyor lift, and then we're going to place it so that it goes over. You can do this however way you wish, but make sure if you are using the conveyors, make sure you remember you can use the R key to swap the inputs for these conveyors. And we're just going to bridge this gap and we're going to run this copper line all the way to this section so that we've got a, a break in between. And we're going to place our first smelter there. For this, we are going to need another four constructors. So what we're going to do is place our two constructors for the wire here. And then we're going to go across and place the next smelter, which is going to be for the cable line. And we're going to place two more constructors. In front of these two constructors, which will all be set to wire, we're going to place a merger. And in front of that, we're going to place another constructor, which will be set to cable. At this point, all that's left to do is to merge the lines for the wire here, and then place more containers at the end of these two lines. At this point, and this is the perfect opportunity to unlock the MAM research in Hub Tier 1, as well as the next one in Hub Tier 2, which is the part assembly. Whilst you're waiting for these to unlock, you might as well go off and grab some Caterium ore from a local Caterium node if you know where they are. These will be super useful later on when we're going to look at unlocking smart splitters for our storage system. So now we're going to unlock the part assembly and then we're going to work on the next section. At this point, the next thing for us to do is to set up the concrete production line as well as the biomass production line, which you're going to need uh, to automate to make life easier for you before you unlock coal. We'll also set up some uh, power units, some biomass generators, so you can run all of this with relative ease. And at this point, we're going to place two constructors. Now, this isn't going to be efficient, unfortunately, until we unlock underclocking, which is done by researching in the MAM the power slugs. So until then, this is going to have to be slightly inefficient once again. What we're going to do is place two constructors, both set to concrete. And then wait for this to uh, run the concrete along. And at this point, we will have automated concrete, wire, cable, iron plates, iron rods and screws. So let's look at power and more importantly, automating biomass. Early on, the two items that you're going to rely on mainly for power are going to be both wood, as you can see here, and your leaves. So we're going to set up two lines for this. First, we're going to place a storage container 
and the same next to that in separate areas. And we're then going to place two more constructors. From here, these will be connected directly to storage units. And we will have one set for biomass leaves and the other one for biomass wood. And from here, you will place all of your leaves if you're returning from exploration in the leaf constructor and all the wood in the other. These will then start producing the biomass for you, which can then be merged and again sent to the end to your storage area. At this point, one thing to consider is doing obstacle clearing. This is great if you want the chainsaw for quickly harvesting resources. So once you've unlocked obstacle clearing, we can replace this with one of these. That is set to solid biofuel. Now this uses 120 biomass per minute. There is no way we can keep up with demand at this at this speed. At this point, we're going to have to unlock logistics mark two, which can be done by grabbing 50 reinforced iron plates. For this, we will just handcraft these, although if you want, you can automate them on the side. We'll be talking about reinforced iron plates and the layout for them in the next video. Whilst we're waiting for a drop pod, we're just going to create a MAM and we're going to start researching Ethereum. It's going to be super important what we want to do at the end of this episode which is unlock the smart splitters as you can see we've now unlocked the ai limiters we're about, about to uh, do these and then after that we will have smart splitters available to us once we've unlocked this let's just see what it requires it's going to require 10 ai limiters and 50 reinforced iron plates nothing too difficult for us so at this point, you have a relatively good little line running for resources. But what about power, I hear you say? Well, this particular factory is going to be running about 100 megawatts. So we're going to set up four biomass generators and we'll do that by the storage facility just over there so that we have our solid biofuel next to our generators. We'll actually place down six generators as well just so that we have a little bit of headroom for something that I want to do later on. In fact, let's go overboard. Let's do eight. And we're going to run eight generators here. This is nice and simple to set up. Having our generators set up in one location is going to make it really easy for us to quickly load. And also if we do it along this side, we actually have plenty of space for some more generators should we need to add on to them later. While we're waiting for our drop pod to come back from unlocking Logistics Mark II, we're going to actually upgrade our lines. Now, if you've got a, you're able to handcraft a few of these just to get this going, you'll want to place one here and you'll also want to do the same here. Now we've still got a few minutes for the pod to return, but we have unlocked now the smart splitter. So the next thing that we're going to do is sort out our storage area. We're going to delete all of these lines with the exception of the solid biofuel. We don't really need to worry about that. And we're going to replace these lines with a smart splitter in front of each storage container. From here, we're going to run the resources back up and they're also going to float straight up into the storage container. Now that you've set up all of your smart splitters, we're going to set up the overflow system. The idea here is that once a container is full, all of the resources are going to overflow up and go to an awesome sink. So in order to do that, we need to go to the smart splitter and we will have any as the center, but on one of the sides, for example, the left one here or the right, we will set it to overflow. This means that once this line is fully saturated, any excess resources are going to overflow to the right, which we're going to set up with a lift. We do actually need a Mark II lift for this because we're going to have 120 uh, screws on this line. Also, let's up, upgrade this line while we're here as well. And we're going to do this for every one of these. One thing that I should mention though, is to keep everything simple, we're going to run 
all but the screw line and also the copper wire, which for some reason isn't running. I need to sort that out. Down to the bottom. So to do that, we're going to place a merger and stack it three high. And it's going to face to the left of the build. We're then going to grab our Mark 1 elevator and connect them. We're going to delete the two underneath. And we're going to do this for all the other lines as well. Now remember for the wire, we're going to want it to go up and to the right. The reason for that is simply because this is going to be a full line of 60 wire and we want to make sure that we can handle the overflow of all the resources just in case. So at this point, we're going to grab our Mark 1 conveyor belt and we're going to run that across these mergers all the way to the end. Uh, actually, this needs to be a Mark 2 thinking about it, my bad. And then here, we're going to have a Mark 1. It's going to go across and up. And we're going to run this all the way across as well. Try and get that in line. I think that's right. And then we also have this one. Yeah, as well. Here you can see we have the whole factory up and running. We're just waiting for everything to saturate up at this point. So the one thing left for us to do in the meantime is to set up some awesome sinks. So at this point, we're going to place three awesome sinks from here. We can pull the line think to there. Grab the elevator and bring it down. Typical. There is a barrel nut bush in the way. And we're going to do the same here. Again, mark two belts. We're going to run it just to the center of where this is. We're going to bring this down. Okay, make sure it's in line with the floor and bring this two back from where the entrance is so that we get this nice 90 degree corner. We're gonna do the same here. And hey presto, you have a working facility and everything should be running efficiently bar the concrete over there. Unfortunately, until you unlock underclocking, um, that's going to be an issue. And once your storage container is filled up, we will have an overflow. Hopefully you can see uh, there, the iron plates are now running along the line and they're going to run all the way to the awesome sink, ready for us to unlock some coupons, which is really important because the next thing that we're going to do is dress this facility up just a little bit so that it doesn't look like an open factory. Now you're probably wondering how we already have 21 coupons. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we have 25 by the end of this. Well, that secret is in another video, which I will put in the top right hand corner now. So how many coupons have we generated? 38, that is not bad to get start started with. Now I'm not going to use all 38 coupons because I'm going to make this save available for you guys as well over on satisfactorytips.com. So should you wish to get started and don't want to do this whole build or you're just interested in how the layout is, by all means go over to Satisfactory Tips. There will be a link below where you can download the save file yourself. But we are going to unlock a few things to get started. I think we should go with some concrete pillars some fix-it roofs and what else definitely these ramped walls everyone knows how much i love those and tempted to go with this stuff but i don't want to overspend the customizer we will unlock the concrete because it looks great 
And we haven't unlocked glass. Now, I really want windows, so I'm going to very quickly go get some raw quartz for us to research silicon so that we can unlock them as well. So here we go. We have that. That 23. I was one off. That's not too bad. So you guys have 15 to use at your own choice. I'm going to deposit them. I'll deposit them in a box just here in case any of you want them. It's time to get decorating. So the first thing that we're going to do is just close off the outside with some walls. And we are going to clip through these. Oh, we need a doorway here. Most definitely need a doorway. We'll remove that for now. Replace that somewhere else. We're going to run this over here. Ooh, this would be a perfect place for a conveyor wall. So would that. And that as well, actually. I also messed up. I meant to get concrete walls, not concrete foundations. Oh, well, we'll play around with it for now. As you can see, we've done an outer wall around our build. We're actually going to add a roof in a moment. We're going to try and make sure that we get them within it. Uh, but one thing that you will want to do for your storage area is to add conveyors on the outside so that you can see what items you have. Again, I do want to add a little bit more detail. Ooh, I wonder. So we're going to use some pillars. I wish I'd done the pillars first. Okay, we might have to delete. redo these to there. So apparently you have to do this manually because it doesn't like the placement otherwise. So I'm just going to really quickly do that and then we're going to place these pillars all along the sides of these storage containers. And there you are. It looks pretty cool. I'm liking how this is going. Next we're going to add a sloped roof and we might do something with glass there as well. So on this side I quite like the idea just having a line up here. Yeah, I'm quite liking that. We're going to run the roof along the side as well. Just something a little bit more fancy. As you can see, we've added a sloped roof, which is going into a flat roof. I'd quite like that to be glass. We can't do that just yet. So we're just going to fill this in. The next thing that I want to do, I was thinking maybe, maybe it's not right, using these. It's not quite the right size. Yeah, oh, maybe. How does that look? I quite like that. Okay, so we're going to run these all the way along and make sure that they're connected with these like this. So I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. It's certainly nothing too fancy, but there is a nice little bit of detail there. You can see how I've done things should you wish to download it. But I'm more interested in seeing how you guys turn this layout into your own build. So if you do decide to do this, why not jump over to our Discord and go to the satisfactory screenshots and show me how your factory ended up afterwards. So there you are, guys. If you did find the video helpful, please do drop a thumbs up. And if you want to see more such as the next section that we're going to be building, which is the reinforced iron plates, the rotors, maybe some heavy, some modular frames, sorry, and even some smart plating, then make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to our amazing supporters, most notably our Solo Eclipse patrons, the Calamity Cerebral Tag and James Irwin, and our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Dixie Chris and Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.